got a question on advancing in calisthenics convict conditioning. Can you progress too quickly? Well, maybe, maybe not. Okay, so Paul Wade recommends you get these 10 stages, you know, and you all, everybody always starts at level one. I don't care if you're an Olympic athlete, so and so, you start at level one and you stay there for like six weeks and then you move to level two and so on. And I know where you're coming from because it's tough to stay, you're doing push ups on your knees and you're like, I can bench press 315, this is nonsense, I'm not gonna get strong off of this. Here's the deal. There's two ways we gotta look at this, okay? And don't be an idiot like me and look at it just one of the two ways. Number one is there is always value to the lighter steps. If you look at the exercise x-rays and convict conditioning, you'll notice that Coach Wade is saying, you know, you're doing this exercise to gain these qualities. It's not just this is gonna make you work harder and build more muscle. It's like this is working on this flexibility or balance or stability or wrist strength or something of value in that exercise. So I'm not saying just go forward like crazy. The biggest step I see, uh, the biggest mistake I see in convict conditioning is people move to a stage and they abandon the other ones below it. Okay? And this is again in martial arts and bike, everything I've ever done, when people become more advanced, if they abandon the basics, they lose and they lose ground. The most advanced people are the ones that keep going back and revisiting the basics and get better and better and better and keep learning from them. So on one hand, don't be in a hurry to toss out the introductory moves. They still have value. Use them in drop sets, use them as a warm up. use them, you know, in, in Veterano Plus, you're doing push-ups and pull-ups and uh, squats and stuff every day. So if you've got a day where you're a little tired or if you just don't feel like working, use one of the earlier steps and see if you can get more out of that exercise. Because there's always more to learn from the introductory steps. The only people who don't are idiots like me when I was younger and then I hurt my knees and I went all the way back down to step two of the squat progression and had to build myself back up. Because I thought, I don't need to do any of that other stuff. I'm on single leg squats and I was an idiot. Okay, I still do close squats, I still do regular squats because they still have a lot of value and I'm still learning from them and I'm still progressing my technique from them. Uh, and the other side of the coin is if you are feeling like you're jonesing for some more and you wanna try the more advanced stages, by all means, go for it. There's no rule against it. You know, when I was a mountain biker, you know, I'd be like, I wanna try the hardest trails. No one said, no, you can't do that, you're not ready. I'm like, okay, go. This will be interesting. He's got no <laughs> skills to speak of. He's gonna suck at it. And yes, I sucked at it. I was terrible at some of those trails, but you know what? I got a lot better at doing the easier trails by doing the harder trails. And then I did more of the, hard, uh, the easier trails, built up my foundation more and back and forth. So I'm a big fan of going back and forth between the various stages in convict conditioning. So don't hold back your progression, but at the same time, don't be in a hurry to progress away from the beginning stages. No one's above the beginning stages. All right, I think I've said my piece. Uh, hope that answers it for you there, Martin. Till then be fit, live free.